to two spells first. Hunter, to that end, has three copies of Murderer's Cut and has two Stubborn Denials. And the other is Overpower Someone. With that in mind, he has two copies of Tragic Arrogance along with several copies of Disdainful Stroke and a sideboard. Though Hunter in a bit of a hole here starting off on a mulligan to five. Yeah, that's certainly going to hurt him. We did see him win this matchup to make top eight over Andrew Jessup, and he certainly embraced a control role. You're right, a mull to five is going to be difficult, but we'll see if he can pull it off. He's going to have to beat Jared Bauer. That's the, the guy who took down Todd Anderson last round if you weren't watching a close three games. Jared is on the play as the second seed and will start... I believe that's Air of the Wilds. Air of the Wilds. All right. That, that's one of the that's a four of in Bowers deck. Did not catch that the first time around when we saw it against Todd. But yeah, he is definitely on an aggressive bent here. Four copies of this card. Yeah, there is an incentive to add more two drops to the deck when you have Anafenza, because you want to get that draw of turn two creature, turn three, Anafenza. Now I'm growing that other creature. It's also a nice thing to pair with Dromoka's Command as it has Death Touch. Yeah. No, I would think in the Obzon matchup, as there's a lot of these cards that, you know, are functionally the same. They're a creature, they're a removal spell, there's a lot of trading. This card to me seems pretty acceptable. Okay, it's a creature, it has Death Touch, it'll probably trade with everything, and hey, it costs two, that's, that's a discount rate. It's not a source of card advantage and can get overpowered pretty easily as opposed to something like Death Miss Raptor, but it does facilitate some pretty powerful openings, especially with turn three and offensive. All right, so Jared will swing, getting the first damage in. That gets Hunter down to 18 and followed up with a Warden of the First Tree. Two mana up. That's going to represent a 3-3. Three, three. Pressure on Jared's plus two creatures. Hunter's going to have to have something. Now, interesting enough, Bauer used the Flooded Strand to go get a Kennedy Fista instead of getting a Sunken Hollow to allow him to have black mana. So that could mean a number of things. Uh, could mean that he has Gideon on the way. Sure, he wants the second white. That's a really good good tell here. It's, it's subtle, but yeah, if he needs the second white, there's only one real card that you should expect that costs double white. We look at Hunter's side. He does have some lands and cards. Obzon Charm. And we'll see, we saw this before with Hunter, all the battle lands. So he has to play Den Protector and then third land into play tapped along with the rest. Jared having none of that. Instead of pumping the Warden end step, he drew Mocha's commands away the Den Protector and, a, and untaps with a huge advantage here. We've seen this a, a couple times now. The battle lands are definitely powerful, but when someone opens up with one on the first turn and uh, other comes into play tap lands, engender the same problem, other non-basic lands. You're playing off curve sometimes for two or three turns. That's what's happening right. in Nance right now. Bauer, on the other hand, is open on basic, basic, and now his battle lands come in clean, and he can curve out very efficiently. All right, well, there's the red mana source and the black mana source, both found off wooded foothills. So may not be Gideon here, but Anna Fenza will do the trick. He's going to go ahead and play her so that he can trigger Air of the Wilds, good call on the extra point of damage, and then swing in for five Hunters down to 12. And post-board, he'd have a sweeper, but pre-board, pre-board, this is pretty, this is hard for him to recover from just because you don't seem, it's hard to cast spells fast enough to deal with minus three creatures. Well, Siege Rhino is not a bad catch up here. It looks like Nance doesn't have it, but if Bower's on empty, then Siege Rhino does a good job of checking both Ward of the First Tree and Anafensa. Hunter goes ahead and exiles the Anafensa. Did not have a land. You're right, Rhino will be great. Hunter is sitting on both Rhino and Woodland Wanderer. So, were he hit the fourth land? He does have some plays, but he'll need it soon. Here's a Pump of Warden, a swing for six. Hunter's taking a lot of damage here. And you see here, Hunter took took five the previous turn and took six this turn, so he is now down to six. He'll need a land this turn and untapped, and it, it's provided. Here's Anafenza, and he passes. Now, he did not, he had Rhino, and he went for Anafenza plus Stubborn Denial instead, it looks like. Well, Anafenza blocks just as effectively as Siege Rhino does on this spot, and Hunter is in huge trouble if the Siege Rhino just eats in a removal spell, so I think this is a safer line. He will go counter. Well, trying a Dromoka's Command would be good. And now you see Stubborn Denial showing through Hunter countering the Dromoka's Command. And now he's just got to hope that Jared can't push through. And, I, and I'm not positive Jared can. I think his last cards are Shambling Vent and Den Protector. Although it, he still may be able to push through the following turn. Yeah. I, I don't think he can get it done this turn. But this is not a bad last set of cards to have. Well, he's assuming with Air of the Wilds. Remember, it has Death Touch, so it will trade. And... This forces the issue more or less. Hunter can't go down to three, so he'll block. Trade will happen. 
Hunter stays at six. And then last card for Jared Bauer. That's the Den Protector. Graveyard full of some weapons. He has Dromoka's Command. That's the best one in there. A lot of his creatures are removed via exiling. So we'll see what else he has. Looks like lands and Dromoka's Command. Maybe nothing else. On Hunter's side, it'll be Siege Rhino back up to nine. Jared to 13. Life totals close. And we go back to Jared. And Hunter working with a, a pretty reasonable cushion here. Yeah, I mean, he seems like he's been so far behind this game, but when you then stop and survey the board, you know, Siege Rhino does a great job of putting patching things back together. And for Jared, he does not use Den Protector on end step. Well, there's just nothing, there's no star for him to get back right now. Yeah, it's just Dromoka's command. Hunter at a healthy nine. Now, Jared, with Warden, can force Hunter to have a kill spell. With six lands, he can, if he's willing to make a big investment here, activate, activate. And that Den Protector can get back land number eight if he wants to go down that road. Yeah, we go, so land and seven in play for Jared. Still has a Den Protector, face down. We're back on Hunter's side. Yeah, Bauer can get land number eight to allow him to animate both copies and attack with the two shambling vents. Sure. So he doesn't necessarily have to get back to Mocha's command with this uh, Den Protector, depending on what Nance does. Yeah, so if Nance doesn't have another blocker, he can just get eight lands and then flood the board with creatures. He, he doesn't even have to make that move. He can also sit back and just pump Warden, force a removal spell from Nance. So mm -hmm. Bauer can't quite close the door just yet, although if he draws a removal spell, then he's a huge favorite to be able to do it. But in the meantime, he's got plenty of stuff to do with his mana. Well, no removal spell at the ready. It's Woodland Wanderer for Nance. Not a full value Woodland Wanderer. It's only a 5-5 five five at the moment. We see Jared. He's going to change gears. And for the first time this weekend, Warden of the First Tree is going to start trying to get big. It's got lifelink and trample now as Jared fed it four. Something to be concerned, though, if you are Bauer, there are three copies of Murderous Cut in Nance's <laughs> list. Yeah, and I mean, here's the danger, right? That Woodland Wanderer could have been a 6-6 six, six if Hunter was willing to tap that dual land. Yep. But he didn't. So either Hunter's an excellent bluffer here, or he just has the murderous cut. Well, Nance needs to show some strength here, because if, if he just taps out and doesn't have murderous cut available, it's trivial for Bauer to just fire up the, wood, the uh, ward in the first tree all the way up and attack. And look at this. Jared draws a card. It's land number eight. He did not attack with Warden or pump Warden. So by not doing this, this means if Hunter has the Murderous Cut, Jared can use Den Protector, buy back Warden, and start over? Yes. And, and I got a, a glance there at Nance's hand. He does, in fact, have Murderous Cut. That was the last card in his hand. So he may do that, but, I mean, Hunter has a, so much trample on board. It, Jared doesn't have time to make that line. You see, here's a swing. That's nine power worth of tramplers. Jared's at 13. Yeah, Bauer makes a move here and just blocks with Warden and pumps. I believe a removal spell will simply kill him. Or it's close to it, rather. Yeah, he'll take nine. But, you know, nine's a lot. Yeah, he's going to block. Here's going to go for five 1-1 one, one counters, force Hunter to have the murderous cut. But Hunter has the murderous cut. Delving away. One, two, three, four. Leaves Den Protector and Ops on Charm. And the Warden will be cut down. Trampling is going to happen, and suddenly Jared down to four. Big turn of events. And Hunter with a blocker. It's hanger back Walker on two. And yeah, Jared facing down lethal here. He's going to fetch on end step. He can use that den protector. Options are Warden of the First Tree and Dromoka's Command. Good cards, but not good cards here. Goes and gets back Warden. But even if he casts it, I, I don't know that it keeps him alive. Yeah, I don't know if he has quite enough time for that. Wingmate Rock was the draw. Great card for the matchup, but once again, may just be too slow. I think my preference there would have been to get back to the Dromoka's Command because that's the highest upside card. If you draw a Siege Rhino, suddenly you're in good shape with the Dromoka's Command. Yeah. The Warden does not do a whole lot. Well, here's a swing with Den Protector. Does Hunter block? It's a free block. Den Protector will be taken down. Jared's trying to raid the Wingmate Rock that he just top-decked. Does have enough mana to 
Cast Wingmate Rock, cast Warden, level up Warden. That's the on-board play. And Hunter takes damage, down to five. So Jared's gonna play the board. Here's Wingmate Rock, another three, four. Here's Warden, no cards in Jared's hand. Level up Warden immediately. And it's a three, three, can he survive? He's at three. Nine power of trample. Jared's got that covered though. He has 11 points of toughness. And he may have just been able to get this. I mean, yeah, it looks like Bauer has the tools to at least block out of this turn. Looks like Hunter's gonna swing the team. Hunter maybe have been punished a little bit for not blocking that den protector. We'll see. Yeah, I'm not sure what trade up he was really worried about in that spot. Because if it's Obson Charm, the Obson Charm could have just removed the blocker anyway. Yeah, sometimes you have the fear of just, you know, when you feel like you're very far ahead, it's fear of the unknown. This block looks, you know, this block, this attack is suspicious. I have life points to give. We'll just take it. But Some, yeah. The problem is I don't think there's a way for Bauer to block here without breaking open the hanger back walker. And then it's hard for him to crack back for anything Yeah, you're right. Is it possible that he didn't want to pump Warden, so do you have the option of just chumping hanger back? I suppose, uh, I, no, actually, I suppose you can put a token in front of Siege Rhino, and you can double block the Woodland Wanderer. And I think that's enough of a block to get out. Uh, I don't know, it looks like Bauer's just packing. Looks like Bauer's just conceding to the attack. Yeah, but that attack's not lethal, I don't believe. I think there's a block there. I think you, could, I think you can put the 3-4 in front of the Siege Rhino. That negates that attack. You can put... Right. You can put Ward in the first tree and Wingmate Rock in front of the Woodland Wanderer. You'll you take lose two, the bird, but that's fine. Yeah, and uh, if, if, if uh, Hunter Nance drew nothing, if you draw a removal spell for the Woodland Wanderer, actually with that block, you're getting the Woodland Wanderer off the table. You're putting enough in front of it. So Yeah, it's uh, six power in front of it, six, seven, added together. So you take care of the Woodland Wanderer. Um, two damage off Hangerback puts him to one, but if he's at three there, which we believe he was, that's not actually lethal. Yeah, there was, in any case, Bauer packed it up and Hunter Nance on a mulligan to five, able to take game one. All right, fair enough. We'll go over to the sideboard. We saw Hunter Nance manage to win some post sideboard games playing for top eight. So that was against Andrew Jessup. So let's take a look at what he does again. This is a pretty interesting one, starting with his sideboard. Well, you got two copies of Tragic Arrogance, a Wingmate Rock, a Virulent Plague, two Disdainful Strokes, two Den Protectors, two Dispels, three Silk Wraps, a Soren, and a Dramokus Command. Uh, we've seen this package before here. I don't know if he's going to bring in Silk Wraps in this matchup because they're vulnerable to Dramokus Command and there's no copies of Hangerback Walker and Bowers List. So they're a little bit worse here, but the two copies of Tragic Arrogance, the additional copy of Wingmate Rock, two copies of Disdainful Stroke, two Dispels, and two Den Protectors. Maybe Dispel, maybe not, but certainly Den Protectors, Disdainful Strokes, the Wingmate Rock, and the two copies of Tragic Arrogance, I think is a really potent mixer for this matchup. Yeah, and you know, that certainly is interesting. Um, that Jack, Jared Bauer, rather, has gotten away from Hangerback Walker and has gone for Air of the Wilds instead. And we've noticed that Hangerback Walker has not been a, very, a star this weekend. Um, and that does get, you think, get Hunter away from something like Silk Wrap? I think so. Uh, when Hangerback Walker is in the deck and Deckless are public in the top four, they know what they're playing against. You are worried about Dramokas coming and blowing it up, but you don't mind if the Silk Wrap is getting a Hangerback Walker because nothing happens if you blow it up and the Hangerback Walker comes back. With Bowers List being all on Ward of the First Tree and Air of the Wilds, it makes Silk Wrap a little bit dodgier because Dramokas Command is going to be powerful if that comes up. Yeah, well, on Jared Bower's side, he definitely, if Hunter's going to go the control route, Jared has the option to go for a more aggressive route. This is something that we saw Andrew Jessup do, and I'd expect Jared to do as well. Looking at a sideboard, he has a lot more low-end removal-style cards. Yep, two copies of Duress, two Self-Inflicted Wound, two copies of Silk Wrap, a Sorum Solemn Visitor, two Tassikers, three copies of Transgress the Mind, two Ultimate Price, and a Wingmate Rock. The additional copy of Wingmate Rock, the two copies of Self-Inflicted Wound, uh, and uh, the Tassikers as well, possibly Soren, possibly Transgress the Mind. It'll be interesting to see whether or not Jared can execute that, that aggro game plan. He's going to have to do it twice in a row. So we'll bring you back to the booth for a second. So we want to tell you about the big event Star City has next weekend. That is Grand Prix Atlanta. It's been coming up for a while, and now we are just one week out. So November 13th through 15th next weekend, join us, Atla join us in Atlanta for an entire Grand Prix put on by Star City Games. And a lot of different options on the weekend. First of all, there's the main event. That's a battle for Zendikar sealed event. You see there, six boosters, try your luck, nine rounds day one, a seven, you know, seven and two record or better, making into day two. 
Um, if not, though, we have Commander Celebration. We have three days of Commander events firing, as well as the Infinite Challenge Pass that you have seen at previous Star City events. Perhaps you want to play a constructed format, Commander or Limited, not your that format of choice. We have lots of Infinite Challenge events going on all weekend in, in assorted constructed events, and that pass will get you entry to each and every one of them. If you're planning on playing the uh, on, the, on those sort of events, the Infinite Challenge badges, the Commander badge, they're very good deals, come with a lot of goodies as well. See in front of you here the play mat. Again, starcygames.com slash GP Atlanta is the website. Hashtag GP Atlanta for social media. This comes free with any register for any of those any of those badges you saw right there before you. Yes, you can choose your experience as to how you want to enter the event. Uh, we have just a sealed pool registration. We you can get a premium upgrade, which gets you a special Zer the Enchanter playmat, as well as the Zer the Enchanter pin, and other assorted upgrades, as well as we have the full VIP special. That one pre-register, a sleep-in special, playmats and pin, as long with side event vouchers, trading cards, and then access to other water, to water bottles and other services throughout the weekend for the premium experience. So tailor that to how you want it to be for the weekend, uh, as well as on the weekend we have extra things, full battle for Zendikar, full art lands, the exclusive Seek the Wild pins, uh, access, and the battle for Zendikar lands, you get those for the Sealed Spectacular players and the Last Chance Grand Prix trial winners, as well as playing in the Sunday Super Series Sealed variety of way to get those lands and of course every time Star City Games runs a Grand Prix we bring in a lot of artists as well our guests of honor we've had them before John Avon celebrated magic artists is particularly with lands doesn't come stateside very frequently so if you want to get some of those iconic cards signed by John Avon anticipate a long line but he will be available throughout the weekend yeah other artists for the event and we have a full artist of a full alley of artists here all weekend for signing cards. Pete, Ven Pete Venters, Winona Nelson, Clint Clearly, Anthony Palumbo, Jason Engel, among others, will all be in attendance at the event. Also, a Commander Seminar and Meet and Greet on Friday featuring a lot of the uh, figures of the Commander community, Sheldon Minery, Benny Smith, MJ Scott, Danny West, including the Commander Versus group that you know from Star City Games videos, Jonathan Suarez, Wes Wise, Justin Parnell, and Stephen Green. And last but not least, we'll have a Meet and Greet on Friday with, you know, some guys who talk about magic sometimes. Yeah, Cedric and I will be covering the main event. Matthias over here will be playing in it. And from 5 to 7 p.m. on Friday, Cedric and I will be doing a meet and greet. So if you want to come by, say hi, whatever the case may be, we're going to be there for a couple hours. All right, so register today. Learn about that. StarCityGames.com slash GP Atlanta. Learn more about the event. And be sure to register today. That one's coming up. Right around the corner. Yeah. One week. Less than a week, actually, at this point. Yeah, yeah. It's, Kicks I mean, off on Friday. Our and meet and greets on Friday. That's five days away. All right, so we start at Bauer on the play. And you know, we've seen this. Lots of dual lands really can tempo out these players, starting on Shambling Vent and then Canopy Vista. All these things coming into play tapped. Hunter Dance, for the record, was on a six-card hand. So they really didn't slow him down. He was on five last game. Yep, and that's a function of these decks having just a lot of card advantage, Den Protector especially. It's rare that these decks just flood out and run out of stuff to do. So uh, you definitely don't want a mulligan, but these decks are more robust uh, with mulligans and a lot of previous standard decks. Yeah, I mean, last game we saw Jared Bauer, I suppose, eventually run out of cards in his hand, but even then, multiple shambling events that he never got around to using. It doesn't seem like these decks, I guess, flood out, so to speak. The, the games end before that happens. Yep, it's... Uh, you know, Bauer definitely still had resources left over. And when he lost the game, it wasn't because he ran out of stuff to do. It was because he lost the battle on the board. All right, well, Bauer still has the first creature on the board. That's a turn three and offense of the foremost. We go back over to Hunter. We'll see how he responds. And, you know, this is the interesting thing. Hunter on his basic lands, looking like he's really the guy with the better mana base at this point. Abs on channel, he put an Anafenza. And the trading begins here. Yeah, we saw the reverse of this last game when, when Bauer was very smooth on basic, basic battle. And Nance was stumbling a little bit with a lot of lands that came to play tap. This time it's the reverse. So board's clean. Bauer will have to reload. Rhino in hand, but no fourth land for Bauer. All he gets to do is make Heir of the Wilds. And that's not going to be... That's not a threat that demands an answer from Hunter. No. Uh, unlike most of the other creatures in the matchup that, that sort of demand immediate answers, uh, Air of the Wilds is something that Nance can allow to be on the table for a little while. doesn't deal all that much damage, and Nance can focus on developing his board or, or focusing removal on Bauer's more substantial threats. Yeah, and you know, this might be pretty punishing. If you look at Nance's hand, he's got land number four, he's got land number five, and, well, he has the card that ends games, Wingmate Rock. If Jared is not at the ready with kill spells, Hunter could make short work of him. 
See, Hunter, now that he got rid of an Anafenza, he'll go for his own Anafenza. Over on the other side of the bracket, we have our first finalist in three games. It is Matt Tumovich winning the obs on Agrimir over the youngster Aaron Sorrells. So Tumovich, the player who admitted to 8-0 and o yesterday, picked up his last first loss in round nine, runs the table, draws into top eight, and now he is awaiting Hunter Nance or Jared Bauer in the finals of our tournament. And it's looking like it might be Hunter Nance. Jared on his turn. No choice but to just pass, no play, no attack. This is has danger written all over it. And if Nance has untapped land number five here, the coast is clear for a rated wingmate rock uh, against what I would assume would be an empty board, assuming Bauer is going to block here with Air of the Wilds. And rated wingmate rock against three lands and nothing in play. Uh, a very commanding position for Nance if he could put it together. Yeah, no, I believe Jared has the obs on charm to take care of Anna Fenza. So perhaps no attacks for Hunter just yet, but you saw him draw Siege Rhino there. So even if this is removed, he, he has plays available. And on Jared's side, he didn't obs on charm. He let the attack happen. Now Raid is enabled, and yep. Hunter's going to go for it. It, it was going to be hard for Bauer to keep him off of this uh, over the long term, because Bauer is stuck on lands and Nance has got other creatures in his hand, but I think Bauer would have been better served to just killing the Anafensa. Now he's really under the gun to respond to this token and the original rock. That's two cards, that's two turns. Yeah. He, and Bauer's already behind. And so he was forced to Obzon Charm anyway there, so it's. Yeah, it doesn't help very much, you know, that there's still a 3-4 left in play, even though Jared traded his obs on charm, traded his air of the wilds. And you see, he's trying to catch up for it. Self-inflicted wound will clear the board again. Uh, Jared keeping things clean, but he's not making Hunter pay much of a price for it. And Hunter can press the mana advantage. Den Protector getting back Wingmate at... Well, Wingmate's exile, but still, Siege Rhinos and a lot of these other things he has going, they're all strong here. And... Uh, Hunter has just drawn an excellent card here, Stubborn Denial. He has the mana available. <laughs> I, well, actually, no. He No, he has it set up. He can yep, cast... Yeah, leave up Prairie Stream. You always got to double check with these lands. <laughs> I thought for a second he was on the Sunken Howl for both blue and black, but no, he can cast the Siege Rhino, leave up blue for his copy of Stubborn Denial, and if Bauer spends his turn trying to kill the Siege Rhino, Nance is going to get way out in front. Yeah, and I was wondering the exact same thing. Hey, can he do this? If he can have Stubborn Denial and Siege Rhino, that's so much pressure on Jared. So many of the cards in these matchups just trade one for one with each other. That cheap cards, one mana spells, two mana spells that can trade, are really at a premium. It's where Stubborn Denial becomes great. And, and Nance here with his copies of Murderous Cut, three copies, that's a lot of copies of Murderous Cut, yeah. plus his two Stubborn Denials, which he's splashing a color for, going out of his way to make sure that he can get to two spells in one turn territory faster than other Abzon decks. Well, no play from Bauer. We go back over to Nance. Hunter goes to attack. Jared wised up. It's going to try to obs on charm the Rhino so that no rated wingmate rocks happened. But despite blinking the right play, it's just not going to work out for Jared. Stubborn Denial takes care of the obs on charm. Jared's going to get hit for four. And Hunter going to continue, let the threats keep on coming. Cracks for a sixth mana source. And he just has options. It looks like he'll go for... Den Protector face down can get back. Obs on Charm can get back. Stubborn Denial still has another Sorn in his hand. Hunter's going to clean this one up. Yeah, and even with Murderous Cut in hand and a bunch of cards in the graveyard, the rest of Bauer's hand is so expensive that he can't put together two spells in one turn. And he's so far behind at this point that the best he can do is respond to one of Nance's threats, and Nance will simply untap, attack him for some amount of damage, place another threat, rinse and repeat, and I don't know if Bauer can claw out of this hole. No, and it's it's just a story of too little, too late. Uh, Jared, with a good curve out of plays, he has Gideon, he has Wingmate Rock. These are great cards to have, but the lack of lands is going to eventually catch up to him now. We see here, he's going to have to go for a main phase murderous cut. That'll be on the Rhino. It's going to slow Hunter down, but Den Protector will do so much. And now, actually... Bauer gets, uh, or Nance rather, just gets to get the Siege Rhino right back. Yeah. <laughs> now it's in the yard, he certainly can make that play. Saves Bauer a total of one point of damage. <laughs> yeah, it's tough. I mean, if Bauer wants to go for the Murder's Cut, is there, perhaps he wants to do that in Hunter's upkeep, so well, that if Hunter end steps the Den Protector, he can't get Rhino? Uh, the problem there is that Nance then just gets the Den Protector back, stubborn denial. Well, that's even worse. Uh, yeah, there's no, Bauer's just jammed up. There's not a whole lot to be done. I suppose he could let him flip up the Den Protector, and then with that trigger on, he could cut the Rhino. Maybe, it, but Nance might just go in on tap. 
is the problem. Yeah, and then everything's terrible. You're yeah. absolutely right. There's, there's, I mean, on three lands, there just aren't that many great plays you can make. Yeah, I mean, you can hope that, that Nance messes up, but the most likely scenario is if you just pass with their mana up, Nance will go, okay, untap, untap. attack you. Yeah. So here's the swing for three off Den Protector, and, well, he got it back last year and might as well cast it. Hunter will make Siege Rhino. Bauer down to six, looking like it might be his last turn, and Nance, he'll keep it coming. Here's another Den Protector. The draw is a Den Protector from Bauer. That is not going to keep the damage across. And Hunter Nance, 2-0, is on to the finals. A huge weekend here for Nance. One match away from winning the tournament, $5,000. That's a huge deal. But now 20 open series points on the weekend, solidifying his place in the Players' Championship.